All right. Uh, so how to mitigate some of that risk, right? So, uh, you know, there's no question that there's risk about it. Um, now, and by the way, as we go through mitigating the risk pieces, uh, both Richard and I are assuming that you actually already have a game plan and you've got that like 10-step game plan probably already there. And, and once you've got that there, uh, we're, we're going to walk through what you can do to mitigate the, the risk. There's a lot of vendors out there uh, who, who've done a pretty good job of, of building out those game plans already. And, and you know, that's a, that's a whole separate webinar on, uh, on, on what, what the real details of those uh, uh, game plans are. So visibility from the sea level. We talked about uh, in, our, in our last section how important it is to get air cover uh, from, from executives. Uh, the visibility to the partner community. I think is huge, right? I've got uh, I've got a couple of couple of folks here. It depends on how historical you are and whether you're a MIA based or whether you're maybe uh, or global based and whether you're uh, American based. If, if you're U.S. based, George Washington pretty did a pretty dang on job of getting down with the troops and, and and being right in there, even through a snowy winter in Valley Forge. Uh, if you're Europe, I couldn't help, or global, I couldn't help pulling out my, my one of my favorite uh, uh, heroes, Henry V. And if you haven't read Henry V, read Henry V. It's awesome. Or see the Kenneth, Kenneth uh, Branagh movie. And, and, you know, and it's, and it's a ba battle of Agincourt where 6,000 Englishmen in their truly their greatest day. Sorry if there's French folks on the, on the, on the line. Um, uh, you know, beat, beat 30,000 uh, uh, troops in, in just a, an amazing battle. Um, or you can look at Meg Whitman. The reason I put Meg Whitman up here is, you know, over and over again, I have heard from HP individuals that through all the challenging times that they've had, that their CEO has embedded herself with the partner community and, and really gotten in there with them. And I'm talking about in the room kind of support, right? Where they create this atmosphere of joint success and, 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 and don't promise what, what, what can't be committed, right? So I think this leadership internally at the vendor and Richard at the partner level is, is really key. Again, absolutely. It, you know, it's, it's, it's showing that commitment, um, you know, that, that people are really looking for. I mean, it's like any high risk adventure, whenever you're doing something that's high risk, you really want to make sure that the people feel that you're working with feel as committed to the process as you. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no question about it. And then, um, and then you got to create a cloud sales force, right? Um, it, it's just absolutely key that uh, there is a group in an organization that understands the differences and the uniqueness of what this uh, partner community is doing. And and, and and as you said, Richard, I think you brought up a really key point. It's not that you don't need the partners. Um, it's you need them to be different. And if you take the same group uh, that have been managing uh, traditional uh, resellers, uh, you're, you're going to get a lot of breakage there, right? But it, it's, it's just, a once again, it's a different world. Yep. Okay. Um, create specific gives and gets. I know this sounds like a no-brainer, but they have to be real and, and, and not like the Dutch when they bought Long Island. And once again, sorry, don't mean to insult the Dutch. This is a long time ago. I love the Dutch. But this was a bad deal for the Indians, right? And uh, people can smell this stuff a mile away. Partners are going to be s skeptical about the gives and the gets, right? Partners want real commitments for the vendors. They want a transition plan. They want to be pulled into that. I think, Richard, you, you mentioned that, right? They, they need to know what your plan is. Look, they're going to have cash flow crunches. You know, I know a partner who had, you know, a million dollars in the bank and he, as he was ready to fire his, his non-recurring revenue clients and, um, and move to uh, a recurring revenue stream. And he, he had planned. But um, a lot of folks haven't. So, so what can you do for that? that uh, soften that cash crunch, right? Um, are the quality of leads there, right? How quickly can you start to get them into the ball, the, the, the ball game? I mean, it's great to talk to them about the rule of 78 and show them how compound works. But if not closing deals, it doesn't matter. You know, are you giving them DG dollars, right? Are you helping them in true business development side of things? Are you willing to share data? You know, once again, do you have a cloud sales team? These are commitments from the vendors. And the vendors, I think, absolutely need to get commitment from the partners at the executive level, a buy-in across the board. And, and that means a commitment to knowing the business, right? And we'll talk in a minute about, look, there, there's going to be things that don't go well, but you, you really need to get those partners um, uh, bought in. 
Okay. And understand that some are not going to make it. I, I, this is just reality, right? I, I, once again, I go back to my point that I truly believe that that the digital marketing or lack of capabilities of certain partners is going to far exceed and create the the the, the have, difference between the haves and the have-nots. I think, Richard, even more than the cloud because it's so amplified and there's some group that's going to, certain group that's going to pick that up. And, and the reality is if you're a partner and you can't digitally market and all of your buyers are 80% there and they're looking for a short list to find you, if you're not on that short list, your percentage of success is zero. And, um, you know, vendors can, can drive a lot of that, right? They can, they, they can surely help, but um, it, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge, right? Um, so set realistic expectations, have a plan, understand things or things may not work. Um, if you go into this, understand if you got plan A, it's going to turn into plan B, right? Uh, set up aggressive goals, um, but understand it's not going to be a smooth ride. You're going to have a highs and lows, uh, and it's definitely not going to be linear. Um, and then build in expectations that you may have to do a reset. I don't know, Richard, uh, I, I'm sure you talked to organizations that had expectations of X, and then, you know, six months later, they're literally going to go, hmm, this is going to be more like Y. Yeah, and we see that a lot. And, and you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, back to what you said very early on where there's, you know, million-dollar partners or billion-dollar partners who might not survive in two years. You know, the players who are surviving aren't always the ones you would predict. Um, and as a vendor, you know, we all get very used to working with, uh, you know, quote-unquote our best partners. And, you know, we just need to recognize that, that this is a time of transition and, you know, some of the people who come out on the other side of that are going to be different than our existing best partners. You know, Richard, we have more conversations with our clients about um, how are they – how, how are they segmenting their partners than just about anything else? And, and that goes across everything. I, I think whether they're whether it's cloud or whether it's just regular reseller today, you know, there's just no there's no uh, there's no gravy, right? There's no wasted dollars anywhere, and, and they're they're all trying to figure out, you know, which one of these partners are going to be successful. And 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 the uh, characteristics that make a cloud partner successful, uh, it's, it's interesting. I asked so many. I asked that question to almost everyone that I talk to. And you get the, uh, you know, uh, manage finances well, understands recurring revenue, um, you know, strong character. You know, the most interesting comment I, I got, I, I, and it's, it's just kind of hard to qualify, is, is someone said they need to be scrappy. I was like, what do you mean they need to be scrappy? And, and they said, look, they need to be fighters. They need to be really willing to engage in something that's, that's very different. And they have to have that, uh, it sounds corny, I know, but they have to have that sort of never die attitude. Yeah. So uh, build accountability. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you want to do all these great things for these partners. You want to get them on board. You want to make them successful. Uh, but there have to be consequences when, when it's not. Uh, uh, you know, there's a story that, that, that I know where fairly recently um, there was an organization who had a very scrappy partner who went and sold, way oversold and underproduced and overpromised, didn't deliver to, uh, to, to a buyer of, on, in a substantial deal. And, and, that, and, it, and it's a challenge, right? And we're going to run into some of that sort of stuff. You know, you don't want to penalize a partner for, for being aggressive, but if that partner goes out there and misleads uh, a, a buyer, say, for instance, this is the first implementation they've ever done and, 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 and they, 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 they create that they're, they're experts, um, you know, that's a fine line on that, Richard. Um, you know, the, the, and, and what are the consequences on that, right? Uh, you know, and, and you could go hardcore on that if you need to, right? Do you, do you hold back leads? Uh, if they're not uh, getting enabled well enough, if they're not participating in education of not just the product but the marketing side, uh, do you hold back incentives for the same thing? Um, and, you know, worst case scenario, do you blacklist these guys, right? They represent you as organizations. Um, and some of them, uh, as you said, Richard, it's going to be surprising. Some of them who you think were going to be really good are, are, are not going to be good at this. Yeah, and, you know, it's just like, you know, I hate to say it, it's almost like disciplining a child. I mean, you know, you have to have some rules and boundaries and consequences, you know, and you have to be smart enough to realize when you are, uh, you know, 
being using your position a little bit too strongly and and you need a little bit more understanding and to take a little accountability on yourself um, um, you know so it, it, it you know it's it's having that balance but ultimately you do have to make sure that there are those boundaries and that people understand when they overstep them yeah, I, absolutely. They're a represent. They're, they're an extension of, of you, right? So no, no question about it. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, you, 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 I think you balance it, right? Sure, you have you have consequences, but you make sure you have those those carrots there as well. All right. So uh, so let's wrap it up. When, where to apply these incentives? Um, oh, actually, well, before we do that, we'll kind of go back through this. Uh, you know, the five keys to enabling the partners, uh, tell them what about the water, lead them the water, show them how to drink. Ah, you guys don't need me to read this thing. Here it is. Here, the, here We're going to send you guys this and we'll make it available. These are the three sections we thought were really important, enabling the partners, um, managing internally, and, and, and mitigating risk. Now, where to apply incentives? Uh, we knew that we had a lot of ground to cover here. And we weren't going to be able to get through all of this in, in this webinar. However, that carrot side to that consequence is really important. So we'll be working together. We'll either do uh, future webinars or we'll be doing um, some podcasts on this as well. So stay tuned. We're going to talk a lot about this. The one thing that we thought that we would share is, that, you know, we see five key areas for providing incentives as, as you move through this. Uh, we're seeing a big shift to enablement, which I think is super smart. Um, it was spiffs and rebates in particular, uh, where it used to be all about the sale. We're probably seeing about 60-40 now, about 60% sale, 40% enablement. And, you know, two years ago, it was 90-10. So it hasn't swung all the way over. But, Richard, I'm seeing an awful lot of incentives around enablement. I think that's pretty pretty smart. Uh, but this is yeah. where, you know, we're going to talk about it at length but, uh, in the future, but that's when we're sales and marketing have to be really aligned. Uh, the digital marketing, I can't think of a more important place to make sure that partners understand uh, how valuable this is to them. It's going to be the difference for survival for, for so many of them. Once again, you're not on that short list, you're dead. Uh, sales experience, um, what do those sales cycles look like? How do you plan? Um, or, or even back to, are you following up on your leads? How fast do you turn around? You know, leads for like the guys at Kaseya I talked about earlier, those leads are cold in 24 hours, right? You really got to make sure that you're, you're looking at that from the right perspective and rewarding for the, for the right, uh, right behaviors. I, I think implementation gets left out a lot. We're going to talk a lot about that in the future. I, to me, this is all about first impression. You know, three things can happen, uh, either positive, neutral, or negative. So only one of them is good, right? <laughs> you don't want a neutral. You don't want a negative impression. You don't want to have to resell, right? You have an opportunity for your partners to engage and have a strong first impression about you and, and them. And, and that's what creates references, referrals, recurring revenue. I, I can't tell you how important I think implementation is in that first impression. And then that leads into how hard is retention? If you did a cruddy job on the implementation, you're going to be fighting uphill all the time, and you're going to put so many resources and time. Your partner and you are going to kill the margins that you got on this stuff, right? So I think retention and implementation are just, it's just absolutely tied together. Okay. So uh, that, that's it. We want to thank you guys for, uh, for, for listening, and uh, we're, we're open to questions, and, and obviously we're open to follow up on this as well.